Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at how to take a running bearing. Now running bearings are one of the most useful methods we can use for determining our position because it only needs us to have one place to be measuring the bearing from. This could be an NDB station, it could be an object on the ground, assuming you've got some accurate measurement tool, or it could even be a VOR like what we're going to use today. So let's go ahead and get started. So as usual, we know we're trapped somewhere in Connecticut and we want to identify where we are and be able to take a position fix so that we can start making some estimates and some adjustments to our navigational process here. So taking a quick look around, I noticed the fact that uh, we've got a bunch of VORs at our disposal. I'm gonna pick on Groton, London today, which is a frequency of 1110.85. Go pop over to the simulator, go ahead and sit down. I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, whoop, go ahead and reset that. 1110.85, I'm gonna make sure that's been set correctly, it's been identified. I'm gonna go ahead and take a from bearing. So my from bearing looks like it's gonna be 325 degrees. So I'll go back over here, right click, I'm gonna measure distance from the VOR, we're just gonna do 325 degrees. Do, do, do. Again, we wanna be as accurate as we possibly can. In the old days we had to bust out a protractor, it was not what I considered to be an accurate process, trust me on that particular one. Okay, so that's gonna be our first bearing. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to unpause and then I'm gonna go start a stopwatch for one minute. Now what we're doing here is we're basically going ahead and establishing some distance. Now you're probably wondering why are we establishing some distance? The reason we're doing that is distance over speed times time equals distance. And so if we can figure out what our speed is going to be, we can reliably identify how far we've traveled measure our rate of bearing change, and then poof, instantaneously, we know exactly how far away we are from the object. Now, some of you are like, um, that sounds pretty magical. Does it really work that well? Well, it works about as accurate as you can in an airplane traveling at high speeds. Obviously, if you try to do this technique in an airliner, you're going to find yourself in a bad spot because you're basically going to be going so darn fast, you're never going to be able to get it. So now I like to play the little twiddle game here. So we go ahead and tweak the knob. And I'm going to give it a couple tweaks here, a couple tweaks here. You can see it's uh, chilling right around uh, 329 degrees. Again, if you have no movement on this needle, that is a problem. So basically, uh, right when we get up to 60 seconds, we're going to go ahead and freeze times and we go ahead and take a look at what our final reading is. Pause. So it looks like our final reading is 330 degrees. So I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to right click, measure distance from. And we're going to say 330 degrees. See how this works? 330 degrees, ding. So we know mathematically, we have to be somewhere on the second line. It's the only way mathematically possible that we could measure 330 bearing. The problem is we have no idea where we are along this particular line. Now that sounds like it's a problem, but it's actually not. So we, if we can figure out how fast we're traveling and how long we traveled, we know where we are by mixing those two lines together. Coming inside the aircraft, I notice that I've got an airspeed here of about 110 knots. If I actually take a look here, I've actually adjusted my true airspeed indicator right here. You can do that with this little knob here. By taking the outside air temperature, which is five degrees Celsius, putting it directly over my altitude of 5,000 feet, and determining that my true airspeed is gonna be right around 121 knots. Now we need to adjust the true airspeed for wind, which we've done it, and look at that. And now I can calculate my ground speed as being 125 knots. Obviously the calculation is a little more involved. So 125 knots, uh, what does that mean to us? Well, we know we're traveling due east at a speed of 125 knots, and we know we've traveled for one minute. So if I see how many minutes are in an hour, that tells me for every minute I travel 0 0.016 time an hour. So if I multiply that by my speed, I'm gonna go confirm that I'm correct the first time, it's 125 knots, boop. That tells me I've traveled 2.1 nautical miles and I know I'm traveling east. So if I right click, measure distance and do exactly 2.1 nautical miles traveling straight east, I know that I've traveled something that looks like this. So you're sitting there going, oh, okay. So you're telling me if you've traveled this distance and these are the bearing changes, we just need to find the spot on this line where we can go ahead and cross these two points across so that we know that that's exactly how far we've traveled. Now that doesn't sound like too much of a calculation here and you're sitting there looking at these two lines going, well, it looks like you're probably somewhere up here. Unfortunately, that's a little more complicated and I'll show you why. Now, when we made this measurement, we were at a certain altitude, which of course creates the Pythagorean theorem kind of problem. The other issue we're having here is the fact that this needle is only one degree accurate. 
which means that our total calculation can easily be off by a maximum of four degrees, which means that our total calculation at a distance of 60 miles could be off by as much as four miles. Now, if we go pop over here real quick, if we were to take this line and shove it roughly in between here, which is where it looks like it would fit, we could see that our total distance here could actually be as much as over here, which is a significantly bad calculation. Uh, we know we didn't do the greatest job there. So unfortunately for us, when we go to do this, we're gonna to have to take that into account when we do our fix. So the first thing we do when we're doing a running fix here is we're gonna go ahead and guess where our position is. Now, looking at this total plot, normally you would have a dead reckoned position. If I had to guess, I'm gonna predict that we're somewhere right around here. Again, this is uh, based on what my dead reckoned position is. I have a fix from earlier. I know I've been traveling roughly on this heading like this. So I'm guessing that I'm probably somewhere in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click. I'm gonna go ahead and add my self measure distance. I'm gonna put on my heading. Remember, this has to take into account wind. And we're going to go ahead and dial in that 2.1 nautical mile distance, which puts me roughly, again, 90 degrees magnetic. It's going to put me right here. Actually, I think my estimate was way too accurate. All right, put it in right there. Wow. Okay, that was the world's most accurate estimate. <laughs> I guess I've done this too many times. Okay, so um, now that we know that this line has to somehow match these two, we need to figure out where on this line we actually are. The way we do that is we simply, if this did not cross evenly, which in our case it almost did, we simply draw a line parallel to your first line that goes through this point. And wherever this point crosses that parallel line, we're good to go. Now in the real world, we have these beautiful little things called parallel bars that we can use to draw this drawing. Fortunately for us, we're gonna have to use the old Mark 1 eyeball, which is, I'm not gonna lie, pretty garbage. So we know that this is gonna have to be on a heading of tree two five. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure distance from here. I'm just gonna draw a line that goes tree two five parallel to that as best I can. And that's gonna be roughly there. So we know that our true position must be right about here. How do I know that? Like I said, the measurement said that it's on this radial somewhere, and also because we've traveled this distance, logically we can't be any farther or closer from this spot. Remember though, that distance we are away from that station is significant, which means we could be off by as much as four degrees. Right click, I'm gonna assume that this is my position. Add user point, call it fix one, I'll go make it temporary, press okay. All right, let's see how we did. Not bad. As a matter of fact, if I want to measure the distance real quickly here, go ahead and uh, measure it. How do we do? We got uh, 1.2 nautical miles off, 1.7 nautical miles off. Now you're sitting there going, oh, that is just unacceptable. You can't use that in aviation. Uh, the answer is, yeah, you can use that in aviation. That's actually fairly good. Now, if we waited 10 minutes and took another fix, we could do the exact same process. Now, the neat thing is, if we know a DME arc and we know where we're supposed to be, we can use this style of fix as a way to actually identify exactly where we are, or we can use it to calculate our wind speed. But that's for another day. Enjoy.